Vince Wagner will be doing the webinar today. So, Brett, go ahead, take it away. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for, for having me, and, and thank you for having me back uh, after the last webinar. Um, <clears throat> so, this is SX Super Inquiry, uh, and really what that's about is, is consolidating a couple of different screens from various programs in the GUI. Um, on the left there, you can see the agenda. We're going to try to knock this out in about 30 minutes. Um, my name is Brett Johnson. I'm Systems Admin for Cummins Wagner. Uh, we are a uh, industrial uh, mechanical equipment distributor. We do uh, engineering sales and service for multiple markets. We've got nine branches up and down the East Coast. Uh, we've added a few employees since uh, my last webinar, so we're, we're over 225. I don't know the exact number. Um, we are currently on SX5560. We have been on that since we went live. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to upgrading to the web UI and, and hopefully the, uh, the Infor service management product as well. Um, so the reason you know, I came up with this super inquiry uh, was a result of user feedback. If, if you guys are not polling your FX users for feedback, um, that's something you should definitely take a look at. You know, we, we do that pretty much annually, and we can use all of the great web-based survey tools that are out there um, to help the employees get a, a feeling of uh, being anonymous or semi-anonymous. Maybe we're identifying branch or department, but not, not names. But uh, we get some really great feedback from employees with these surveys. And, and of course, you get some weird stuff. You get uh, you know, people who vote for Donald Duck and, and people who will never be happy and just say the entire you know, system's terrible. But, but most of what you get is good feedback. And one of the uh, things that we got across the board was it, we have to look into too many screens and we have to click too many places to get information about our inventory items. So that's where this whole project came from, from the users and, and what I could do to help make their day-to-day uh, -day a little bit easier. And this, is, this is what we're talking about. Uh, there's uh, some, some ability in SX to take screens from similar programs, inquiry programs, and consolidate them. So here, what I'm using, if, if you take a look down here at the bottom, is I'm using OEIP, the pricing inquiry tool, but I've inserted pages out of uh, product inquiry, availability inquiry, and, um, and I've just kind of combined them all into a tool that we've, we've <laughs> relabeled super inquiry. Um, as part of that, I've also cleaned up some of the, uh, the labeling here. Um, sorry, let me get rid of this pop-up. Okay. In addition to the ability to consolidate these screens together, another you know, feedback item that we got from our employees was, you know, this stuff doesn't always make a lot of sense. The SX terminology, the interface um, are both dated. And, uh, you know, what can we do to make things a little more user friendly, not just for the new employees, but we've got occasional users. You know, the, the outside sales guys who have read-only access that might go in a few times a month rather than all day every day. So in this little example, simply changing the names of a couple of, of uh, fields in SX uh, would make it a lot more understandable to someone who's new to the system. So this is something that I'll show you how to do as well. But uh, before we do any of this, I have to do the, the warning, the disclaimer here. Um, we've been using these tools successfully for a while, but I don't have any formal progress training. Okay, I'm not an SX programmer. We don't own SX Architect. Um, what I've uncovered here um, might be considered to the Infor developers a bug or an overlooked issue. Uh, <laughs> sometimes they like to call these things undocumented features. I've only tried this on version 5.5.60. So I know that's one of the questions we've already been asked is what about the, the 6.x versions? I don't know. Um, I, I don't see anything that would prevent this from working, but you really would need to try this on your own first and, and maybe give some feedback to the group and let us know if you were successful or not. Uh, of course, this is really only something that's going to work for the GUI environment. Um, Web UI takes some of these concerns away entirely because it's just a, a more sophisticated 
uh, interface. And this is the big one. Um, I'm able to make this work because all of the involved programs, ICIP, ICIA, OEIP, they all have the same common filters up here in the banner. Now, let me explain that. Uh, ICIP, ICIA, they only need a warehouse and a product field. OEIP, well, you know, that needs to have a customer there for it to work. When I put this tool together, I knew that for that reason, because OEIP was the most uh, sophisticated or the, the most complex of the three, that needed to be my, my core program. I was adding everything to that program because the banner of OEIP contains customer warehouse product. And ICIP, ICIA, they don't care what the customer is. That field can be blank. That field can have whatever you want in it. Those programs don't need it to display that information on their screens. It's only needed for pricing. I'll show you this when we, when we do the demo in a few minutes. Oh, sorry. So, some stuff to think about before we get started. Um, you know, who are you doing this for? You know, who are you, who are you trying to help? You're trying to help your users. So get their feedback, let them contribute to this, make sure that they agree that it's worthwhile. You know, um, I mentioned this in my last WebEx, but hopefully you are uh, implementing and managing your security in a role-based uh, setup where you're using profiles and, and maybe templates to manage those profiles. That is going to make this a little bit easier to roll out and manage. A no-brainer, but you should always be documenting and testing your work in the uh, test environment first. Um, you can't really do this project unless you have admin access. You're going to need to work in AO to make most of this happen, and then you're going to need to change the user security settings in SASO. Um, what we're doing here is we're adding new pages to the OEIP program. And, and those of you that are familiar with the SASO functional security know that uh, those would be uh, new sub-functions, I think it's called sub-functions, that you would need to update the security for. This is another one that's um, no, it's kind of a bummer. Um, this is only changing OEIP. It doesn't necessarily tell SX that clicking on the hyperlinks should send uh, everyone to OEIP all the time. When users click hyperlinks for quantities, when users click the product hyperlink, they're going to be taken to the original ICIP, ICIA programs. Um, I don't think that can be corrected without SX Architect and changing some, some programming. So you might want to consider modding those inventory programs as well as OEIP. Um, you know, depending on what screens you want to make um, available to the users um, when they launch those hyperlinks. Um, I'm going to be showing you everything in my test environment today. I said this in the last demo, it's just worth mentioning twice. Um, always make sure that you give your users a visual identifier so they know when they're in the test environment. And one of the easiest ways to do that is simply to replace the icons in the test environment with something that stands out as different. I use these little smiley faces, but you could use whatever you want. Uh, this change would be made in this folder for any computer, client, or server with SX installed. OK, so let's go in and do a demo. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is a little, a little warm up to Super Inquiry. Uh, I'm in my test environment. You can see I've got my little smiley face. NXT, PST, code images, and you have icon files here that you would update with the smiley face. Anyway, external resources. Let me show you a few examples. I can type help in the address bar. Oops. And it opens up an external folder. I can type oops, I can type something else that maybe we'll call a specific PDF.
So how do we make that happen? <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to go into AO. We're going to go under System and under Menu Options. And let me just, uh, I'm going to use that help example first. This is how you would set up a link to an external resource. Just take a look at the information on the screen here. It needs to know the name, and that's what you would type in your address bar. A title. What is it? It's a, I'll get to this in a second, but the record type is a website. And then a path to that folder. Now, let's look at a different one. Let's look at a PDF link. Again, got the name, the title. It's a website and a URL that takes us directly to a PDF file. Uh, why is it a website? Well, because this screen that pops up is just uh, SX wrapped around um, Internet Explorer's engine here. Now, uh, this PowerPoint, of course, is going to be available on the TUG site, and this is being recorded. Um, here's a little cheat sheet that you could use to set up your own external links. Here's one for a PDF. Here's one just for a path to a folder. The paths that you use here cannot contain any spaces. Remember, SX is kind of old, a little too old to respect some of the newer file formats that allow spaces in the paths. So you have to make it continuous. Okay, But that's all you need to do. You can set up as many of those as possible, uh, as you'd like. Um, so with that in mind, let's talk a little bit more about the super inquiry setup. This is my super inquiry. Um, this is one of the tools, one of the first tools I use to train new employees. And what I usually do in training is I'll take them through all the details of the product and availability and all these tabs. Um, And I'll talk about all these screens in detail. There's nothing new or changed within any of these screens. I've only just merged them into one program. So I'll walk them through the normal training process, uh, you know, breaking down details of all these screens. And then I usually, at the very end, take them up here to the pricing screen and say, you know, this is probably the screen that you're going to use 90% of the time because it shows a nice summary of, of most of the information that they might need to see. So again, the only screen that cares about the customer is this pricing screen. All of these other screens here look and behave exactly like they did in their original ICIA, ICIP versions. They don't care if there's a customer here or not. They're still going to work. And that's the reason why we're able to do this, because every screen involved uses the same two filters here in the banner, warehouse and product. With this in mind, you can experiment a little bit and think about other screens and other types of records in SX that you might want to consolidate. Um, I haven't found any more that we're ready to do yet, but uh, Super Inquiry um, has, has worked pretty well. So let's see what Super Inquiry looks like in the background. Remember, Super Inquiry is built on top of OEIP. So I'm calling up the original OEIP, and let's look at the changes. I'm going to jump back to my PowerPoint here. This is what the original product inquiry looks like when you open up uh, the settings in AO. Take a look at what we've got down here in this menu list. I have a record that corresponds with the left side index of the program. And I mean, it's, it's a name that makes sense, a label that you see there, and then what program that it needs to call to display this information on the screen. Uh, I don't even remember how I stumbled across realizing that you can right click and you can insert rows in that menu list. Okay. Now, I did find out that you can't reorder this once you've done it, so you have to have your order created correctly to begin with. But this was interesting. I now was able to insert and then fill in whatever values I wanted from the various screens. 
and I was able to build what you see here. Now while I was in here making those changes, I went ahead and <clears throat> excuse me, came up with some friendlier labels. So when my users are looking at Super Inquiry, the index on the left side makes a little more sense. Um, I don't remember at this point what some of these field names were originally, but I know that this uh, definitely was an improvement, even if I'm just removing some of the unnecessary abbreviations. And of course, your um, Windows environment, your resolutions, your font sizes all contribute to whether or not something might get pinched, but I still think this is a lot nicer than the original titles. Okay, so here you can see my changes as I made them right there. Another thing that you could change if, if you wanted to is you can change the title of the screen, of course, but look what else you can change. You can change the security level necessary to access this if you, if you needed to, um, and you can also change um, the tool tips, the hover over for the mouse, all that fun stuff. Now, when it comes to SASO security, let me show you what I was talking about. I added all of those pages into my pricing inquiry program. And I believe that when you do that, by default, it's going to load them as no access. So your users will open up your new Super Inquiry tool and we'll see a lot of blank. Um, make sure to go in here and maybe you just do it as a sweep for all users and you just reset the access for all of these sub-functions up to the level that you need it to be. And if, if you had any reason to change the security level um, mentioned in AO, then you, know, you might have to do a little more work here, but I think it's pretty straightforward. So again, just to recap how this thing works, you enter the acronym of your program, okay? If you want to change titles, you can do that. If you want to change hovers over, hover overs, you can do that. But this is what it's all about, the ability to override insert before, insert after, and delete these individual screens out of the programs. And if you did want to create, for example, a, uh, a help button like I've created, new, help, help, and then just start filling out the fields as I have them listed here in my PowerPoint, of course, try it in the play system first and make sure that you get the results that you want before doing this in live. Well, I think we've got this done with uh, seven minutes uh, to go, Gary, so um, I think we can open it up for questions. Saw one question come over. Nath Nathalie Roy, can you uh, say your question, please? Um. No. Okay. Um, let's try. Uh, Oh, here we go. Can uh, you put back slide number 12? Sure. Hang on one second. I'll put that back for you. Okay. Uh, Sam, you want to go ahead and say your question? Sam from Malmberg Truck. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Good. It works. 
Um, I was just typing up my question, but um, on the screen here you have that wonderful detailed list of procedures. Was there, is there an easy way to go find those? Is it a matter of opening up every menu item that you might have some interest in and taking note of what the procedure is that you specifically want to call up later? Um, I don't know of any way to do it other than just by uh, going into the, the screen here in AO and, and looking at it um, one at a time. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. We've got a point um, from Linda. Uh, Linda, write it in for. Um, you should be cautious of the standard field. Uh, when you set to all versions, you will lose all of your changes when you upgrade. So you need to make notes to uh, recreate or repeat it after the upgrade. So she's referring to this field right here, and she's saying that if we leave this field as it is, upgrades will uh, wipe out this work. Um, not such a big deal to me because we won't be upgrading until the web UI. So <laughs> I'll be I'll be happy to see it uh, replaced with something better. But um, that's that's a good point. Uh, I don't think we have. Uh, let's see. Where will this information be found after the seminar? Um, Gary will have this posted on YouTube. Um, I think he'll. You he might jump in here, but I think it's within 24 hours or so. Um, yeah. I will post my PowerPoint on the TUG site uh, today. Yep, I'll get it up by the end of the day on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a question from um, Stephen Hall. Uh, does the view dropdown update two or just the view on the left hand side of the screen? Um, I'm not 100% sure I understand. Let me just open up mine here. And um, this view, of course, is updated, but if I was to open up my ICIA, you could see that the, the changes I made to, for example, um, uh, the warehouse availability tab here, uh, the title would need to be changed separately in both places. Uh, changing it here will not roll it over to there. Um, Uh, so I have another question regarding Linda's comment. Uh, do the changes disappear only with an upgrade or with an install of any new or modified code? Um, well, I think Linda would probably, you might want to get clarification with Linda directly on this, but I would think any code that would touch these programs, you would risk resetting your changes. Um, if you're, you know, upgrading something in APET, you know, maybe maybe it wouldn't have anything to do with these programs, and you'd be able to, you know, leave them alone. Oh, and I did just get confirmation that uh, what I uh, talked about today works in 61090, so that's good to know it's working there. And oh, and Linda clarified um, only when you do an upgrade, and these tables are redelivered with a new version. Okay, so that's that's a pretty big change. Um, mod updates um, shouldn't affect this. I mean, that's of course it's a mod that directly affects <laughs> these programs. Um, I don't see any more hands being raised. Um, we'll hang out for a couple more minutes. If there's any other questions you guys want to toss out? Okay. Well, I think that's winding it up. Gary, do you wanna do you wanna take over and wrap things up? Well, I have nothing further. Just to say um, thank you all for coming. Have a great day. And then, if there's any follow-up questions, um, you can respond to Brett's post on the on Brett's post on the on the Tug site. So, all right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day. Thanks, all. Yeah. Thank you, Brett.